Howdy, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, we're going to mix it up a little bit. Today, we're going to be talking about the scarab. The scarab beetle, the tumble bug. And yeah, just really fascinating uh, subject, symbolism, the universality of symbols. And yeah, I just thought it would be a nice little change of pace. Thanks for joining me, as always. Your time is precious. Um, just a little update. Next um, Atlantis video will be out. Shooting for tomorrow, maybe Friday, or maybe Saturday, sorry. Um, got my birthday coming up this weekend, and I'm going to be taking about a week off work. Going out of town for a little bit. Um, in the 4th of July, um, I'm going to try and do a live stream on the 4th. Talk about what the 4th of July was or may have been in the past. I think that'll be fun. It'll either be a live stream or a video, one of each, one of either or. And then I'll be out, up on the 4th. Um, yeah, trying to finish the month out strong. Um there's a lot of other stuff I've been working on, but it's like, you know, they kind of all work together. The Etruscan stuff is working with the members series on my Atlantis videos, which is going to be transitioning to Lemuria for next month's uh, members series. And for those that aren't aware, I have a members exclusive um, series that um, comes out with no ads for two weeks, you get a two week jump start on it. Um, and then, uh, you know, a, a live stream with members where we discuss kind of the directory and, uh, what the subject matter is going to be for the following month. Um, so yeah, other ways of supporting me and what I do. And if you appreciate it, then fantastic. If you're looking for more ways to do so great. If not, no problem. I love all you casual um, listeners and watchers along. Everyone's uh, time um, is very important to me, so I don't want to waste it. So enough rambling. Let's get into the article. Um, this is going to be um, kind of a few different articles, um, but the first one we're going to talk about is going to be from Tennessee, 1886. Gonna share a screen and I'm gonna disappear. Ba, 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 ba. Starting over here, a tumble bug. Again, this is from 1883, Tennessee. A tumble bug, a symbol worshipped by Eastern nations. To the standard, the tumble bug, Scarabesis, Caesar. I'm going to mutilate these, you know, um, Latin pronunciations of Lin Linicus is found in this country from Maine to Texas and in Tennessee. Seen during the springtime, they are often seen in myriads, shaping and rolling their balls in the freshly fertilized furrows. So again, the scarab is seen in America from Maine to Texas and in Tennessee. This insect of the beetle family is identical with the scarab beetle of the ancient Egyptians and in no particular differs from either, either in form, color, or habit. It was held in the greatest veneration by ancient nations of intelligence. Those who represented the advanced civilization of the period, it can be traced back to the gray dawn of civilization even to a time before Egypt was inhabited and the religious feeling connected with it. Extended through Asia Minor, Phoenicia, Greece, and Eturia, the Egyptians held it sacred to Amun-Ra, the sun god, and their symbol of the sun, of immortality, of the creative power, and was connected with an astronomical and funeral rites. Of the sun, for the reason that one variety, also abundant in Tennessee, has diverging from its head 
in fan-like shape, a brilliancy resembling rays of the sun. It rolls up by the action of its legs a ball of dirt that contains its eggs, which is eventually buried and thus became the symbol of reproduction. The number of its toes, 30, symbolized the days of the month, and the movement of the ball, the motion of the sun. You see that? The sun is what moves. Hmm. It was the first living creature seen coming to life from the mud of the Nile after the subsidence of its waters and was supposed to be only of the male species, and as such, signifying self-begotten or self-existent. It was worshipped when alive and embalmed when dead, being placed either next to the skin on the breast of the deceased or inside the closed left hand. Really interesting. I love the left hand, right brain symbolism. In past years, thousands of mummy cases have been broken open, and the bodies they contained destroyed by vandals in searching for the sacred scarab. Sometimes realizing large prices for fine specimens, valuable as historic relics in the cabinet of the antiquarian. To the Egyptian, the representation of a scarab was sacred, and it was carried as a charm or an amulet, being in that form the earliest engraving on stones known. And they were cut in various materials, the oldest of those found being satite or soft limestone. The most used material was granite, jasper, serpentine, and verde, verde, antique. A few were engraved from enamel, coralinen, and amethyst, but these are extremely rare. At first, carved representations of the beetle contained no inscription, the underpart representing the legs of the scarab folded under it. But subsequently, that part was finished flat and engraved either with hieroglyphics or the representation of a deity, so that it might be used for a seal. The earliest manner of wearing the scarab was by stringing it so that it could be worn pendant to a necklace. The back engraved and serving as the private seal of the wearer. Subsequently, it became the custom to perforate them longitudinally so that by passing a wire through the perforation, it could be shaped into it and worn as a finger ring on the forefinger of the left hand, as that finger was thought by the Egyptians to contain a nerve leading directly to the heart, forefinger of the left hand. The inscription run from right to left, and the engraved part was turned in next the flesh. Those found on mummies embalmed most extens expensively sometimes have bodies of stone with extended wings as if flying, these wings being occasionally of metal and the four legs clasping a representation of the sun. A few years ago, the Bulak Museum of Cairo, containing bushels of scarabs, was robbed. The thief, well versed in Egyptology, passed by numerous specimens intrinsically valuable for the delicacy of their workmanship, for the genius from which they were carved, and only took some 80 or 100 of no apparent worth as to workmanship or material, but were which of infinitesimal value. As in the whole museum, they were the only ones which illustrated a particular dynasty and could never be replaced 
So much importance was attached to these that the fact of the robbery was telegraphed to all parts of the world. In Italy, a peculiar kind of scarab is found, known to antiquarians as the Etruscan. From its being most frequently found in Tuscany, the ancient Eturia. They are usually made of a common dark red stone, such as is seen at the present day in the beds of Italian streams. And some have been found made of onyx and agate. The ancient inhabitants of Italy follow the Egyptian form, except that the back is cut much higher and the legs are cut out on the sides. The material of which they are made is semi-transparent, while those of the Egyptians are few, are with a few exceptions opaque. So the Etruscan, again, predating the Egyptian use of the scarab, again, the scarab symbolism is found all over America and more than likely originating here as many of the oldest mummies are found here in the Americas and that the symbolism was carried east after a cataclysm as even the hieroglyphics of the Giza Plateau and Nile Valley describe the red land to the west that sank. Queen Mu who left the Yucatan and ventured to Egypt, carried the symbol with her. And I believe it is this origin that connects the pathways between the Italian, the Tuscan, um, the Venetian, the Phoenician, uh, across the pond and vice versa. Again, the universality of symbolisms as well as language. And there was lots of really good takeaways there in that article. Um, but yeah, let's, we're going to hop out of that one. And we're going to go check out some of my older posts um, that I've made in concern to the scarab. And just kind of, you know, bridge some more gaps and talk about some scarabs found in America. <laughs> Again, thanks for being here. Appreciate you guys very much. This one's called Unearth Ancient Relics, Wyoming Territory, 1893. Unearthed Ancient Relics, Bones and Weapons of Mound Builders, Disinterred in Kentucky. While digging a well near Sand Spring, Kentucky, Recently, a number of human bones were disinterred together with a quantity of weapons, spearheads, arrows, and axes of copper, obsidian, and very good brass. The axes especially showing very fair workmanship. The bones all belong to male skeletons, with the exception of one of the best preserved, which was that of a woman about whose skull was bound a crown or a sort of diadem of silver set with an opal cut with skill and of extraordinary size and luster. From the appearance of these remains, says the Philadelphia Times, it is probable that this was an ancient battleground on which the slain were buried as they fell. Local archaeologists who have examined the skulls declare that they are not those of Indians, but of a people of superior intelligence. Some of the skeletons are seven feet in height, one measuring eight feet, four inches. This latter's breastbone is shattered by a copper knife, which was still sticking in the severed bone. The presence of the woman's remains is not to be accounted for except that she may have been the queen of the tribe and in person led her host to battle, sharing their lot and being interred with them. 
Among the relics is a lamp provided with a wick which has hardened almost to stone and on the body of which runs a curious inscription cut into the brass. The lettering resembles, resembles that of Egyptian monuments. There is also an engraving on it of an, an insect strangely like the scarab of that country. Another reminder of ancient history is found in the fact that one of the skeletons has seized another by the heel and his teeth are still to be fixed in it, crunching the bone in his grasp. That these people were identical with the mound builders is more than probable, for it is known that the vanished race was particularly numerous about there. Fantastic. Amazing. Here's an AI image that I put uh, a quotation from that article, and here's what it made for me. It's just amazing. Uh, the hieroglyphics, the symbolism, right? Important symbology. Again, that previous article discussed that one of the Scarab family is found from Maine to Texas and in Tennessee. And here we are in Kentucky, finding very old relics of giant people with advanced jewelry, advanced weaponry, and this Egyptian hieroglyphics and their symbols. Because it wasn't the Egyptian symbols. It was the Phoenician, Etruscan, Egyptian, right? And the Egyptian claim, again, to be survivors of Atlantis. This one is from the 1880s, and it's the title of this presentation, Scarabius. As an Egyptian and Phoenician emblem, the Scarabius or dumb beetle, dung, I'm sure they meant dung, but it could be dumb beetle, played a most important part. It is a dreadful bore, this having half a frozen names for every bug and fly. Sorry, he's talking about the... Um, the Latin pronunciation for these family. The Greeks called it Cantharus. Cantharus. Cathar? Catharus? Cantharus? Very interesting, right? The Greeks are calling it that. Cathar? Hmm. The form of this insect was greatly employed by the Egyptian, Phoenician, Etruscan, and other artists in making rings, beads for necklaces, etc. On the Egyptian monuments, we find the four species of this bug delineated. I won't bother pronouncing the Latin pronunciations. You can see them here, though. I remember all this far from it. Many mystical ideas were connected with the dung beetle. The number of his toes, 30, represented the days of the month. The deposits of its earth ball containing eggs referred to the lunar month. The movement of the ball itself recalled the action of the sun on the earth. The fact that there is no female of this race suggests the paternal principle of nature. The Egyptian hieroglyphics for this bug is kepru, denoting the verb to be. So much use was made of it as an emblem that the early Christian fathers called Jesus the Scarabius, because living. The insect was worshipped, and dead it was embalmed. Powerful there. It's the, the Jesus reference is really, really, really powerful. Kind of um, timeline representations as well. But yeah, just love that one. Um, here's uh, a breakdown I did on the scarab crop circle. I believe this was found in the early 2000s. Don't quote me on that. Um, 2005, August 21st, 2005. Um, 
this is someone else's work. Sorry that you can't see it very well, but basically they're showing that the not only did it delineate the sun, but it also was about your seven chakras and the wings of its, um, the points of its wings marking different dates. Um, here's another representation. The ancient Egyptians believed that a scarab beetle, Kepri, would carry our sun back into brightness after a total eclipse, like the one that took place July 2nd. 2019. Now, my birthday is on July 2nd, and a very interesting thing about July 2nd, it's it's the 183rd day of the year, with 182 days on each side of it. It is the capstone, or the apex day, of the calendar with 11s and twin pillars on each side. 182, 182, 11, 11. Um, Very interesting. And then this is a representation of a crop circle that appeared on July 3rd, the day after the eclipse. Now, what's interesting here to denote is that bismuth which the scarab shell is comprised of bismuth. And the shell um, I don't know if this is going to work here. Hopefully, nope. Doesn't work. The shell is comprised of bismuth. And the Zuni would grind up the shells and use it as a charm for people that had been struck by lightning. And it was said to protect them or cure for lightning strikes. And yes, yeah, so the, the scarab beetle shell, um, as you can see in this representation here, I've shown that the two legs, the rear, um, can pro, can, are like the Ark of the Covenant in a, in a sense. The shell being bismuth, its weight, it's number 83. It's holding the sun disk raw or it's dung within its eggs are held within uh, death and rebirth. And also I correlated it with the decay of radium because as you see, as radium decays, it becomes all these different things and bismuth being one of those. And through mining, they found that bismuth and radium had a great affinity with one another, of course. And the way radium was found was quite simple. It was found that bismuth had a great affinity for radium. So bismuth was used to attract the radium and thus radium was extracted from uranium. And after that means were found of separating bismuth and radium again incredible i think these symbols are multi-layered and represent several things right um, as above so below as within so without the scarab beetle gla- grasping raw radium bismuth the scarab beetle representing bismuth and that through electrolysis bismuth was used to separate radium from uranium very interesting and i think there's obviously the jesus correlation is very very interesting so here's the breakdown on july 2nd i was born in 86 this is kind of irrelevant but it's the 183rd day of the year with 182 on each side why the solar eclipse and the scarab crop circle the relation to its symbology the radium decay the DK chain, how bismuth was used, what the symbol um, seems to be harmonizing with. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that made sense. Um, I've shown also in my um, 
Anomalous America episode as we covered not only Utah and Arizona that this symbol was found prevalent amongst the ruins there in Utah and Arizona and that the some of the tribes still held the animal sacred with a similar creation story or sun god story attached to it as we find with the Christ narrative but again showing the relationship to it being not only perhaps a literal story but the literal action of the dung beetle but it's also it's it's archetype and it's mythos and what that represented yeah so thanks for joining me on this episode stay tuned uh tomorrow we're gonna have another episode it's gonna be a little bit different um kind of etruscan egyptian phoenician-esque but yeah thanks for joining me have a wonderful day guys um again appreciate everybody so much and let me know in the comments what you think and um maybe we'll do a radium episode tomorrow i have tons to go over there so maybe that's what we'll jump into next but yeah have a wonderful day bye guys